What's going on y'all? Hobdi here. Um, in this episode we're going to be rebuilding a 9.5 inch GM 14 bolt axle. This axle is the semi floater um, as compared to the full floater which is the 10.5. Um, in this video we're going to install a Detroit True Track limited slip differential and some Yukon 410 gears. Um, now I'm not a professional and I was learning as I went so there won't be too much commentary during the video. Um, it's not the end all be all guide to rebuilding axles. This is just meant to serve as a reference point for the 9.5. Uh, use this video in conjunction with some more professionals to get an overall view of building axles. Here's a quick list of some of the tools I used throughout the video and that you might need to. Here are the part numbers and prices of all the parts I used in this video. To get started, cover off. Um, you don't have to take, you can take your axle shafts or your bearing caps off first. I took my bearing caps off first. I say that orientation matters, but on the semi float, it really doesn't because only one side has that little uh, bolt hole for the clip. And then there's a little mark on the outside of them that you can kind of see a tab. So it's really hard to, it's impossible to mix these up. I believe the axle shafts may be different lengths, so make sure to keep them separated, you know, which side is which. When you pull your carrier out, make sure you don't drop or lose any shims or spacers. If you plan on reusing your gears, uh, you want to be careful here that you don't tear up the threads on the pinion. I would not recommend hammering on the nut. Um, just get an appropriately sized punch and hammer in the center of the pinion.
So this is why you should use brass punches while removing these races. I used a uh, steel chisel and you can see that I tore up the housing and I had to spend some time sanding it back flat so my race would seat flush. Both axle seals fought me pretty hard. I had to basically just chisel them both out. Um, just take care not to damage the housing again when you're working on this. So on the other axle bearing, I was able to stick a long piece of EMT in and just hammer it straight out. Uh, this side fought me a little bit harder and had to be grinded out. So I would recommend disassembling the whole axle, removing all your braces and seals, kind of cleaning the whole axle out, making sure there's no debris in there, make sure you get this magnet nice and well, and then reassembling. Some people like to grease their bearings going in, and while you can, it doesn't really have any long-term effect. As soon as you put some oil in here and run it for the first time, that oil and grease is just going to mix, and the grease is going to dissipate. So it might be good so that you don't have a dry start, but I just threw some oil on mine. To reinstall these, I used my Harbor Freight press tool. I got an oversized one that would stay on the outside of the race. I uh, covered it in duct tape and I got it started with that. And then once the race started to seat a little more, I, I used the, um, the old races to keep them going. Uh, if any high spots came up, I just tapped it with a ch For making your setup bearings, I would not recommend using an engine hone. Uh, you can get it at AutoZone for like 20 bucks, but I'd suggest using a Dremel.
I made the mistake of doing this in millimeters. Um, it's not the way to do it. Do it in thousandths of an inch. The semi floater 14 bolt is internally shimmed. This is why we need a setup bearing so that way we can take those shims on and off without needing a press and a puller every time we want to remove that bearing. We're doing our first trial run of checking the gear pattern in backlash. You want to make sure there's no play in the pinion and you don't want to use your seal at this time. There are some machining imperfections from factory, so Yukon recommends you file down any high spots or burrs on your gears and carriers so that way you have a nice uh, clean flush fit. I cut up the old bolts to use as guide pins while seating the rear gear on the new carrier. So I didn't have a vise big enough to hold the carrier, so I just slapped it in between my boots and held it that way. Um, when I needed a little bit more resistance, I stuck a piece of EMT covered in duct tape on the inside of it, and I was able to hold it that way. Uh, I torqued everything in a star. I think I started low at like 60 foot-pounds, and then whatever the hot, I think these are torqued at like 75 or 80, and then I moved to there.
I'm not going to go into detail about backlash, but I was holding the pinion here with an adjustable wrench and a cheater bar so that way it wouldn't move. To get a more clear contact patch, I held my hand over the ring gear while turning it with the pinion gear so that way there was some rolling resistance and they'd really be up against each other. So the yolks changed in about 95. If you're ordering a seal for this thing, make sure you order the right pinion seal for your axle type. So now we are f starting final assembly. You want to have all your good bearings, your pinion seal, and your new crush seal in there. So the crush leaf starts crushing at 3 or 400 foot pounds, so either it's going to be a score to get some giant breaker bars and a couple people to help you do this, or you can use an impact. If you use an impact, it's very tedious because it's very easy to over torque it, so you want to go slow, one or two impacts, recheck, and then... There's a pinion preload range of about 15 to 22 inch pounds, but that's not including the pinion seal installed. The pinion seal adds some resistance, so you're looking for about 25 inch pounds with the pinion seal. If you do overdo it, you can just beat the yoke back off, punch the pinion out, replace the crush sleeve, and restart. You do not have to buy another pinion.
These axle shafts had been sitting out for quite a while, so I hit them with some brake clean and a small brush to get any loose debris off of them. In the manual it says to test these, you want to spin one wheel and the other wheel should rotate the opposite way. Check both wheels going both ways. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, reflecting on how the actual build turned out, um, it, it wasn't quite perfect. I made some mistakes. Um, Y'all saw them. I ruined the pinion gear. I, I had intended on staying at 373 actually, but I ruined the pinion gear when I was taking it out because I threaded on the nut and flattened the threads. So that was unfortunate. Then while taking the races out, I chipped the edges around the race and I ended up having to sand that down and file it down. Wasn't the end of the world. I managed to get through that. Um, managed to get the races, you know, seated fully in afterwards. Um, one thing I really wish I spent more time on though, and I'm still concerned about, is the contact patch on the ring gear. Um, it's not perfect. I consulted a few professionals. It's definitely an acceptable and runnable pattern but it's, it's not ideal. The patches aren't perfectly centered. Um, the, the guys online were saying that I needed to go about three thousandths uh, deeper, so about three thousandths more shim depth. Um, I think I'm at like 0 .025 or 0 .026. Um, wish I ran it a little bit more, but it'll buff. Um, what else? Um, I actually forgot to torque down the little bolt that holds the adjustment thing. Um, so I'll have to open this back up in a second and redo that. But other than that, you know, I think I think the axle build went pretty well. I'm excited to see this thing run. Um, and we'll just kind of have to see it. Um, the next two episodes I got coming up, I'll, have, I'll probably do like a short five or six minute video on actually installing this thing under the truck. I don't have any plans to do the brakes at the moment. I know you probably saw they're a little grody. Um, I'll get to those a lot further down the line when the truck's ready to run. Um, I threw some fluid in it, fluid, I threw about two quarts in here, I'll probably top that up in the next video, and um, I got, so this will be go going in, that'll be the next video, and then I got the engine tear down started behind the camera, so that'll be video number seven. Um, appreciate y'all watching, uh, hope this was helpful for to you, well, hope this was helpful, um, y'all enjoy.